Hey, what's up? And welcome to Nate's NFT Talk. In this video, I want to talk about this hot new NFT game that just came out on chain about two days ago. I'm fired up for it and I'm going to show you why this could be pretty huge. Okay, really quick before I get into it, what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to explain it really quick on why I think this is going to be a good one that you can get into now, but I'm also going to explain it. I'm going to do a TLDR over the white paper so that you can jump in and play it after you watch this video. You'll have a good understanding of how the game actually works. I'll show you the back end. I'll show you the UI, how all the interactions work in case you want to play. But also, if you like this video, subscribe and leave a comment below. I'm going to pick one lucky winner to give a free Sentinel 2. So if you watch this video and you're like, hey, you know what? This seems cool. I want to get into it. Make sure you leave a comment, like and subscribe on this video. I'm going to explain how to play it and then you might actually get a free Sentinel so you can just jump in and start playing. OK, so what is this project? This project is called Eternal Elves. OK, it's like Eternal Elves, but it's Eternal since it's Ethereum, you know, so if eth Ethereum, eth yeah, you get it. All right. So these guys just popped off two days ago and they're at a 0.28 floor, which is actually interesting because earlier they were at a 0.4 and they've been bouncing between 0.2 and 0.4 ish since they launched in about 48 hours. They've done 792 Ethereum on secondary, which is absolutely nuts. And the owners, this isn't right just because they're all staked. There's a good percentage of them that are staked, meaning the owner's number is going to look small. But trust me, there's a lot more owners than 366. Another reason I'm super excited for this game, this is in their white paper, but this is basically explaining the development of this game and like how they've got to where they're at. OK, so this is who they modeled. Now, remember, these are Etherorc originated developers. OK, so these guys, they, they know the Etherorc system inside and out and Etherorcs are extremely successful in their own way. OK, they're they're doing very well. They have over a two ETH floor and they're an awesome community. So if you look at who they modeled, you can see that they took bits and pieces that are very, very popular and a really good idea from different successful projects. They from Ether Orcs, from Furballs, from Neo Tokyo. If you go and look at this, they've put some amazing things into this project. And I think this is going to be probably one of the most successful on-chain RPG games to date and in the future to come. Okay, these devs are doing some amazing stuff. Now, why do I think this project, after having a blow off top of, from launch, hitting some successful numbers like this, why do I think that it's just getting started and why does it have big potential? Well, because the two main devs behind the project are Bef Jezos and OX Husky, who happen to actually be two of the devs from Ether Orcs. Now, if you know anything about Ether Orcs, Ether Orcs is one of the most successful and one of the original on-chain RPG games. Okay, so Ether Orcs, if you look at the floor and you compare it to uh, the Eternal Elves, this is a 0.28 floor, right? The Ether Orcs Genesis series is a 2.668 Ethereum floor. And it's built by the same guys, but there's a totally overhauled, new revolutionized system behind Eternal Elves. Basically, the devs took their success with Ether Orcs, compiled it, and then they mutated it into its own new elaborate thing and then built Eternal Elves. So not only do I think Eternal Elves could actually match Ether Orcs, but I think they could actually pass Ether Orcs value. Now, a quick disclaimer, I got to put this up right here. This is not financial advice. Do your own research, uh, look into the projects. I'm just talking about some cool information. You do what you want with it. All right, so now that we covered a little bit about the project, why I'm excited for it, I think it has amazing potential because of the it, they've already got a solid dev team, a, a dev team that is known that has done very well already with Ether Orcs, uh, very experienced developers, community builders, as well as the game designers. Okay, but the art is really cool. So if you look at the art, the art is actually adaptive NFTs. So it adapts to the metadata as you're playing it. So, for example, you see this elf right here, this sentinel uh, doesn't have anything in her hands. But if you look at this one, she's got weapons. Well, guess what? This one could have weapons like her. It could have a weapon like this. It could have a weapon like this. And that's all based off of the play style. And each weapon has different uh, points that it will add to like your attack power and all this different stuff. It's an actual RPG on chain game. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to explain this stuff. But we're going to go ahead and jump in and do a TLDR of the white paper. And if you're wanting to play this game, 
this is where you're going to learn how to do the basics. All right. So in this part, I'm going to explain to you guys how you can start playing this game. I'm going to cover the basics. I'm going to give you a little bit of strategies, uh, what I would recommend and what I'm going to be doing. And I'm also going to show you the UI. So I'm going to show you not only how you could play this, but I'm also going to show you how to do it on the back end with my own Sentinels that I actually have. So basically the storyline is long story short, bad guy shows up, locks the uh, big powerful elders away and the Sentinels have to fight to build their army, gather enough supplies, and then they'll go uh, free the elders. Okay. The elders are actually the Genesis series of this NFT project. Okay. So if you think of a Genesis collection, so like the Cyber Kongs, right? Cyber Kongs are a pillar in the actual Genesis edition style where the Genesis token is a lot more valuable than like the baby or like the, the smaller version of the actual project, right? But this is backwards because the Sentinels, they're not the big valuable Genesis pieces, but they came first. You're gonna build up an army, you're gonna build up power, and then we'll go out and we'll mint the elders later on after all the Sentinels are minted and they've gathered their supplies and weapons and leveled up, okay? So this, this is building up into a big, on-chain RPG game, starting with the Sentinels, then we'll get the Elders, and then once we get the big powerful Elders, we'll be able to move on into the next expansions of the game. There's a lot that they're gonna do with this. And of course, boom, the game overview, I'm gonna explain it super quick. You level up Sentinels, you go into either a passive or an active play style, uh, you're trying to gather Myrin or Ren, which is the in-game currency, which is used for minting and buying items. Now, earlier we were talking about the army and the elders, okay, the sentinels and the elders. Uh, the sentinels are the primary pieces that we're going to use to build up our supplies and our Ren so that we can actually mint the elders. Now, the elders are going to be the genesis of the collection, but we don't know what exactly we're going to need. We know we're going to need a bunch of Myrin, okay, like a lot of Myron and something else, which they haven't told us yet. Okay, so let's talk about how the heck this game is played. Okay, there are currently two play modes. Okay, this third and fourth. Um, there's the Bloodthirst and then Redacted. Um, those are not released yet, but you can do passive staking or the active campaign. All right, so let's talk about those. The passive, you earn Myron per day staked, okay, or per staking period as well as one level per day while they're staked okay so you can just pay gas once stake them and they'll just sit there and generate tokens and then you can pull them out at a set uh, set time period and boom you can cash out this is what you want to do if you don't have a whole lot of money for gas and here's why it's because currently until they add an l2 version of the tokenomics okay so until they go on to polygon right now it is on ethereum so each time you send someone out on a campaign or a mission um it does cost gas okay so if you're if you're low on gas maybe stick to the passive for a week or two until they release the l2 and then once we have that polygon uh tokenomics system we'll go ahead and focus more on active campaigning okay but if you're not worried about gas and you want to just have a lot of fun and level your guys up and get some cool items go with active campaign with you guys in the active campaign system, they can get rewards, which is the Myron rewards for going out on those campaigns. They get levels based off of each campaign. I believe they get about three levels per campaign completed. Okay. And the weapons that they get are going to increase their attack damage and attack benefit. Okay. And then you can also get items and the items are going to play a big part in active campaigning as well. Okay, so let's talk about those two modes really quick. Um, passive. So if you put one Sentinel away for seven days, at the end of the seven days, you'll get your Sentinel back as well as the 140 Ren. Okay. Now the Ren goes up exponentially the longer you stake them out for. So if it's seven days, you get 140, but if it's 14 days, you get 420. Okay. So that's more than double, right? Of what you would have been getting for seven days. And then you can fold that over again for 30 days, you'll get uh, 1200. Okay. So the longer you go out, you get exponentially more Ren. Again, if you're short on gas money and you don't want to be burning through gas multiple times every single day for playing active campaign until they get on the L2, this staking it out a ways would be a good play. What I would personally recommend actually is they said it will be about a week or two, maybe more ish uh, before the L2 comes out. So what I would actually do is I would stake for two weeks to get that exponential bonus 
um, per Sentinel and just stake them out for two weeks because by the time they pop out, L2 will be done. You don't have to worry about gas playing the game and you're saving ETH and you're making Ren. Right? Like that's, that's a good way to play it if you don't have a lot of gas money. And then the active game mode. Active game mode is where you're gonna be sending them out on campaigns. They're gonna be doing some cool stuff. They're gonna be finding items. They're gonna be finding new weapons. They're gonna be leveling and generating rent. So right here, you can see that the uh, active mode depends on the following. So leveling. So you'll gain three levels after completing campaigns or bloodthirst when bloodthirst releases. Uh, characters total attack points. So weapons will add to your character's attack points. And we'll talk about all these stats here in a minute. Regeneration time. I'll show you the calculation for that. But basically, if you send them out on a campaign, they're going to take damage depending on the campaign that they went on and their character stats. They will have a set period of time that they have to wait before they can go back out. Bear in mind, there are items and healing that can take that regeneration time away. And I'll explain that. And then the sectors, the sectors are basically zones that have a higher difficulty for the creatures for your guys to fight so that you can send them after, if they're a higher level, you can send them to easier sectors to just make some ren really quick and keep their regeneration time low. Or you can send them at a sector that has a higher hit point per creature. It's a little bit more risky. Um, you might not win the campaign, but if you do, you'll get a higher Ren payout. So I keep talking about Ren, and the reason you really wanna focus on Ren is because of the minting, okay? So you'll get more NFTs, you get more Ren, you can mint more NFTs with it, all right? So check this out. With the Sentinels, there's gonna be 6,666 Sentinels total, okay? And right now I believe there are 4,102 minted out of 6,666, okay? So if you look at the uh the trenches right here ren required so right now we're in the 180 ren trench to mint okay so 180 after uh the 4500 sentinel has been minted it will bump up to 360 ren to mint one but you'll start that sentinel at level 15. okay so as this as they mint on the ren required to mint will go up but the level the starting level will go up as well and then also minting is going to slow down because it will require more Ren. So if you look at this chart, we already know that we're at 4,100 minted and it's going to slow down. And then once all of this mints out, we will be looking at moving into the 2,222 Genesis, which are the elders. All right. And again, here's the chart that you can see where the Sentinels, uh, there's 500 in each of these next tiers. We're at the 180 right now. So every 500 Sentinels that are minted, it will go up in Ren expense. Closing out for the last uh, 333 will cost 2,700 Ren, all right? And the starting level will be 80. So the entire point of this phase in the game right now is actually for generating Ren and building Sentinels because as you're building more Sentinels, you're building out your army, you're gonna be able to generate more Ren leading into the minting of the Elders and the Elders are gonna be very valuable to have. Okay, so a couple of the charts that you really need to pay attention to are these ones, which if you're on the UI and you go to play, you will be able to see these charts. They are the rewards and the creature's health chart, okay? So rewards and creature health, which I really like the fact that they put these all in the UI just right here in the game mode so that you don't have to keep referring to the white paper. You can just click on the chart, check it out, go, okay, that's cool, and then move forward with that, all right? So campaigns. If you're not gonna just stick them away and stake them, uh, this is some stuff you really need to understand for the campaigns, okay? So the rewards are based off of the sectors and sectors are like zones, as I mentioned earlier. Zones are going to be based off of your level, okay? There's a level requirement as well as a creature health, okay? Which your creature health points, you wanna have a higher attack point uh, or higher attack damage points than the creature health. If you look at the creature health and then the rewards campaign, the first one you'll see is uh, Whispering Woods, okay? So the sector one, the rewards is 10 Ren, okay? So anytime it says rewards and then the number, that is the reward amount of Ren that you'll get, okay? And then also you'll see the weapons probability, so the t uh, chances of you getting a weapon while in these zones, okay? Or on those levels, all right? So check this out. If you are going into Whispering Woods in Sector 1, you can see that the Whispering Woods level requirement is level one. And in that campaign, okay, the, the creature supply, there's 6,000 level ones. 
meaning you you don't can't just keep putting him in forever and doing that okay you're literally beating back an army with sentinels the more that you push them back the more sentinels that will be gathered and this army of creatures will eventually be wiped out your entire goal is to essentially optimize your build so that you're winning these sectors okay you're you're keeping up with your level requirements you're beating the creatures health okay with your damage points okay the total which we'll show you here in a second and you're also staying ahead of the creature supply because if you run out of creatures and you're still trying to level well it's going to be hard for you to actually level up unless you end up just staking so as long as you understand that if you have your rewards chart right here you can see how how much ren you will get for doing that but you can also see okay here's the requirements or the creature's health like what would i have to beat as far as weapon damage to be able to earn that so if we go to sector two in mount luna the creature's health is 144 so we should have a damage point total that beats 144 and if we do that mount luna on sec sector two would pay us a 32 ren do you see how that works so that's basically what you would want to be paying attention to is leveling up and actually getting your weapons and everything going so that you can do higher damage you can take on higher sectors and you'll get paid out more rent now i'm not going to break down this entire thing because i would be here for you know an hour explaining all of this but if you're trying to figure out when you send people out to do a campaign they're going to have a regeneration time okay this is where you're going to sit back and you can do a quick calculation to figure out how long it would take for the regeneration period if you were to send them out to do that campaign okay so you can go through this chart and figure it out but basically if you're keeping up with the level and just hitting just enough to make it through it you're probably going to be sitting at around 24 hours per regeneration unless you use a healing potion or a heal from a druid okay so let's talk about the classes okay so the fun part the classes so the druids they have okay regeneration i mean they're good re decent regeneration meaning they can uh they regenerate faster they get their health back faster they could campaign faster but they have very low attack points okay so it would you would have to really equip them with good weapons in order to get their uh attack points up if you want to win campaigns however do not campaign your druids and here's why the regeneration period that you would use for a campaign would prevent them from being able to heal an assassin or a ranger okay where the assassins and the rangers the assassins do mid-grade damage but the rangers do the highest amount of damage okay so you want to save your druids to allow them to go out and attack faster. Your assassins are going to be an all-around character. They have mid-rated regeneration, meaning they regenerate fairly fast. And they have a mid-attack points, meaning they're not the strongest hitters, but they're definitely not the weakest. So your assassins are going to be kind of the middle ground. Uh, you could use them for whatever you really need them to. But if you're going to send somebody in to do a lot of heavy hitting damage and you want to campaign super quick, focus on rangers. The rangers have the slowest regeneration, but they do the highest amount of damage. Now, here's the cool part about the rangers. They may have the, the lowest uh, regeneration, but being healed by a druid, it reduces their regeneration time by 50%. So it takes half of their regeneration time away. Okay, whereas healing a, an assassin only takes a quarter of their regeneration time away. So it's more beneficial to save your druids to not use them on campaigns and then heal your rangers so that you can be doing high damage, but you're doing a faster regeneration rate. Okay, so you can so you can send your rangers out on more campaigns. So just looking at the classes, doing a quick overview, the druids with the rangers. So if you have a one to one, if you have one druid to, to one ranger, and that's just your set that you just run on. Uh, that's kind of the meta play, right? <laughs> just focusing on druids healing your rangers and having your rangers just smash through uh, campaigns. That's going to be the best play to hit the highest numbers the fastest, in my opinion. Beautiful thing about this game is my opinion doesn't mean I'm 100% right and you could probably formulate a better strategy. That's just a really quick way that I think you could play this game. And in fact, if you look at my build, I actually have a one-to-one. -one. I have uh, two rangers and I have two druids. So 
guess which way I could be playing my active campaign. So races, I'm just going to brush over super quick. Um, they're all pretty much the same. They, they look different. Okay. If you go over here to the chart, these are all different races. Um, however, the one big one that I would really pay attention to is if you look at the Woodborne, there's only 69 nice out of the entire project. Okay. More are going to be minted. But if you look at the floor price, 0.25 okay so a quarter of an ethereum but these guys are four times that okay these guys are the rares so if you get a woodborn uh sentinel do not throw them on the floor i will cry for you all right so each of the classes have their own stats as well as their own equipable weapons now you can see the uh character nft right there right as you get weapons and stuff your nft for your character for your for your sentinels will actually update based off of the weapon that they're currently holding so you can see that on your actual collection which i think is really cool it's an adaptive nft style where your nft actually reflects what they have equipped and then of course you can see the stats right here and the footnote that druid reduces the cooldown time by one fourth for assassins and by one half for rangers okay there is a 12 hour cooldown upon completion and druids gain one level when healing. That is their special ability. Druids are the only ones that have special abilities. And then assassins, you can see the assassins attack points right here and then health points. Remember that weapons, uh, equipped weapons add benefit to the attack points of the unit. So it is beneficial to get the weapons so that you can do more damage to the creatures. And same goes for the rangers. You can see their stats here. Now, as far as items, you can use any combination you want. You can go through this. You can look at them, but there's six of them, okay? The Talisman of Enragement, Moon Elixir, Midas Ring, Spirit Band, Aura of Immunity, and the Demonic Rupture. Things that I would focus on, me personally, I would focus on Moon Elixirs because it uh, increases their HP by 50%, okay? By healing them or, like, increasing the health, it reduces the regeneration time, okay? Okay. So you could actually say, for example, you have a ranger, you could use a moon elixir and then a heal from a druid and your regeneration should be gone because it would be 50% for the heal and then 50% for the moon elixir. You should be good to go. You would be able to send it out and uh, take it on. Now, if you want to focus on Ren generation, you could use the Midas ring where you would increase the factor of Ren by two. So you would make more Ren on campaigns. And then I, I would also focus on the Spirit Band or the Aura of Immunity. Spirit Band increases the level factor by two, so you can get to those higher numbers quicker. And Aura of Immunity, it actually makes it so that there is no regeneration factor for that Sentinel. Remember, the regeneration factor could be up like 24 hours. So this would make it so that instead of having to wait an entire day to play that character again, you could send him out back to back. And if you just want to do a crap load of damage with your Sentinel, you can always equip the Demonic Rupture and send him after a higher level creature in a higher higher level zone and make some more Ren that way. So let's jump in. Let's play around with the UI for just a minute really quick. So you go to app.eternalelves.com. You connect your wallet. You'll be able to see your claimable Ren right here. Remember, you do not have to claim to mint or buy things from the merchant. Okay, so don't claim it. You can just leave it there. This is the UI. So you've got your play mode, which is this screen. You've got your profile, which will actually show you the uh, uh, the Sentinels that you have. And you can see like the logs and all this different stuff. This is the mint page. So when you get enough Ren right here, you can see mint with 180 Ren. I only have 30, so I need 150 more, but I could mint a new Sentinel right there if I had enough Ren. You can see the number of minted elves right here. So there's been 4,105. So if we look at this chart, 4,105 uh, falls within that. So anything under 4,500 will require 180 Ren and they will start at level five. So after uh, 4,500 elves, the price will be 360 Ren and so on. Make sense? There's a FAQ. So if you ever have a question, probably check there and look up if you have a elf number. So I have number 80. I can pull it up. Boom. There's my elf. I can see all of her stats and numbers and everything that I want right there. So to play, you can select any number of your elves and they will be stashed over here in the party. Okay. So you can stack a party or you can send them out solo. You, you can make any mix and match you want. Ironically enough, I have twins that were 80 and 81. So those are my blonde twins that I can uh, send out to do stuff. So let's let's pick these two, right? So we can say select 
there's those two we can click on actions we can send them to passive which is staking right we could send them out on campaign or we could send them out through bloodthirst which is not available right now but let's say let's send those two out on a campaign actually what i don't want to campaign my druid remember so i'm gonna i'm gonna campaign these two rangers so I'm going to hit select. I'm going to say action and then I hit campaign. So here is where you would pick. Okay. So this is where you want to pay attention to their levels, their health, their damage. Okay. I would just take a notepad really quick and just write down how much their damage points are just so I could say, Hey, they could take this on. So if we go back, back, if you go to the lookup, so I have 80 fetch elf, we can see that her attack points are six. Okay. So her attack points are six. And then my other one is 81, which I believe is going to be six as well, just because they're new. Yeah. So six and six. So I could take that combined and do 12. We'll go ahead and hit next actions campaign. So we could go ahead and go into the whispering woods. You can see the level requirements right here. Um, the Mount Aluna, they actually just announced the minimum level required will be 20. So that'll actually be, you'll be able to get there quicker but then there's the enchanted meadows. Okay. So it goes whispering woods, enchanted meadows, and then Mount Iluna. So let's go ahead and hit next. So the sectors, this is going to say what the requirements are. Uh, game mode campaign sector two, the Myron rewards is 12 creature health is going to be 24. Now, if you remember my attack points are six and six. So even if combined is 12, I'm probably not going to make it, but this one I could. So I would send them out after this one. But before I would even do that, I would say I want them to re-roll weapons because they don't have weapons. So I would say, yes, let's re-roll some weapons. And then I would hit next and send them out. This right here would uh, show you your regeneration time if you mouse over. So expect your regeneration time is going to be 22 hours. Remember, I have two druids, so I could take 50% of that away immediately so I could send these guys out. Uh, I could do this twice in a day because they would be 11 hours and 11 hours. So I'd be able to get a total of, so there's 10 Ren and 10 Ren. So if I did that twice for each one, that would be 40 Ren for the day that I could do it within a 24 hour period. Does that make sense? So then you would hit confirm and you would send them out. Let's talk about the Druids. So how does healing work? You select one Druid, otherwise it won't show up. I'll show you. So if you select more than one Druid and then you do this, you'll see that there's nothing, there's there's no heal screen. If you click on actions, you won't see it, right? If you click on a Ranger, you'll see that there's Unstake, Forge, and Merchant. But if you click on a Druid and you hit select, you'll see heal. You can actually click on heal type in the token ID number of the Sentinel you would like to heal. And when you hit confirm, whether it's a Ranger or a, a, an assassin or even another Druid, it will take away a percentage of the regeneration period. So that is how you would use that healing. You just hit the heal, type in a number, you hit confirm, you approve the transaction and boom, they will be healed. Now for the merchant, you just select any uh, Sentinel and then you click on merchant and then it'll say, hey, do you want to try for a new item? There's a 20% chance you will get a new item for 0.01 ETH. So you could just click on that and then roll it and then boom, you would get a new item. For forging, there's a 20% chance you will get a higher tier weapon, a 10% chance you will get a downgrade and 70% chance you will get a different weapon within the same uh, tier. So for me, I would just want to roll that and just hopefully I get one. Or if you don't want to spend Ethereum, you could always just send them out on active campaigns, select weapon, and then just try to roll one for your character on that campaign. But at the end of the day, this game is open to all kinds of different strategy. You can stake some and you can campaign some, you can campaign all of them. Uh, the, the entire point is just for you to be paying attention to a few numbers and just play around with the stats. I mean, you could come up with your own meta play and absolutely crush this game, or you could be playing it completely wrong and have no idea what you're doing. To prevent that from happening, I hope this video helped you, but their Discord is gonna be in the description below. I highly recommend you go join the community and ask questions if you need help. All right, so remember, make sure you like this video, subscribe, and leave a comment below if you want me to do another video on this uh, project as well, or if you want me to review any other projects. Let me know what your favorite thing is about this project, what you're excited for in this. And I'm going to be picking one of you guys 
to actually give you a free sentinel okay we're gonna airdrop it to you so make sure you do that and if you're not already in their discord which this video should be in there as well as an educational point but if you're not in there definitely do that those guys are gonna help you out and it's an awesome community with that said i'm gonna end this video it's been a long tutorial but hopefully it's been beneficial to current members as well as new members and i hope to see you in the next video